What is good? We're back. We got Austin. How you doing, bud? Good, man. Just house hunting, trying to keep the girlfriend happy. Just <laughs> nice. living the dream, dude. Oh, Not yeah. really, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I what about you, dude? How you doing? Good, man. Good. Good. Getting ready for Thanksgiving. Trying to get one more uh, little show out here. So so we got Austin here for your pleasure. Um, Going to talk, you know, a little bit of buys and sells. Maybe a little contender buys. Maybe some rebuilding sells. Uh, things of that nature. So... Um, Without much further ado, uh, well, first, you know, be sure to uh, subscribe, comment below, five-star review, all that jazz. Um, very much appreciated. You can hit us on the Discord with the $5 holler. Uh, but anyway, let's get to some some buys and sells. We're going to kind of keep it short and quick this week. Um, Austin, who, who who are you feeling as as uh, some buys or sells? You can take it any, any direction you want to go here. Yeah, man. First player I got today, a buy for a contender. It's Kyron Williams. Mm. All right. I got two words. Recency bias, right? So people completely forget what this man was doing the first six weeks of the season. They just completely forget that he was a top nine running back in 66% of his games. Mm -hmm. He was a top four running back in 44% of his games. Okay. So like nearly half of his games, a top four running back, right? He's five, nine. 194 pounds he's never gonna be good because he's too small mm -hmm. uh just i'm just i'm just joking jokes on me man because i'm the biggest size this out there yeah. so like you know it's funny i never thought i'd be saying this about kyron williams just you know 11 weeks into the season but here i am man i'm vouching for him i'm telling you to go buy him um it, you know apparently weight doesn't matter anymore for running backs um unless you're like h in apparently but uh <laughs> you know dude just can't stay healthy anymore uh no i still i still like h in but all jokes aside I love what I saw from Kyron Williams this season. Um, man, he he looked so good. And Sean McVay said he looked so good that Cam Akers, get out of town. We don't even want you anymore, yeah. man. Right? So uh, he booted him out of town. We don't need you. McVay also mentioned a few days ago, um, actually it might have been today, that Kyron's expected to be back this week and mm -hmm. return from IR. Love that. He had a sprained left ankle injury back in week six. He put on a clinic back in week six. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. Kyron will fully step back into his lead role. I promise you. I feel very confident. Uh, Daryl Henderson, Royce Freeman, you know, they're going to lose the the very little fantasy value that they currently have. Gone. Forget it, you know? Yeah. Not that you can get it. Not that you can get anything for those guys. But, um, you know, if you can go maybe a late second, man, that's what I'm cool with paying for Kyron Williams. Right? We're talking about a contender. Send it, dude. Uh, give up that late two. Go win now. Go ring chase. Get it done. You know, that's why we play the game. Oh sure, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. I'm not, not not a huge fan of like saying sell off every single asset. But if if I'm in, and sometimes I will. But you know, if I'm in if I'm in contention mode and I need to bolster up with one more really solid player, like I mean, I'm I'm, I'm or or two more, like I'm ready to ready to do so. At the end of the day, like you said, you're trying to win, and you know, I I'd, I'd probably even maybe pay a little extra than a two. You know, I, I we don't know what the long-term value or or where what and when Kyron is going to be a thing uh but you know I think I think you're gonna he's gonna be around for at least one more year and then you know if, he, if yeah. he's playing really well like what wh where is he going maybe he does get supplanted and not doesn't get quite all the work that he's getting but I mean he seems to function in this this McVay offense you know really well and, and McVay you know since being burned by <clears throat> paying an RB uh you know I don't I don't I think he's going to stick to a certain philosophy at this point um, and find guys he can get it done with. And, and Kyron has stepped right into this role and, uh, you know, clearly, like you said, outperformed Cam Akers. It was a nice surprise for everybody who had him. Uh, and the only sell that I had, like, I have Kyron on three or four contenders and I didn't sell him. The only sell I did sell was kind of a mid range. I wasn't sure where we were going and I sold for a two in Godwin. So, like, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> I think that's all right, but I, I guess the the moral of my story is I I think I'd probably be willing to willing to pay more than a than the two, you know. Yeah, um, I, I I don't even hate that man. And there's there's a few more things that I want to mention about yeah. Kyron just before we move on. Like the kid's 23 years old, he's got fresh legs, fully recovered, 20 plus rushing attempts, 158 yards, and a touchdown in his most recent game. Right, that was back in week six. 4.7 yards per carry is fire. That's what he has on the season. Right, he scored 21.8 fantasy points. In 50, per, I'm sorry, 21.8 plus 
fantasy points in 50% of his games this year. I mean, dude, like I have Jonathan Taylor. I have Brees. I have Bijan, man. I'm just hoping they can score 15 points a week. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, you got you got this like nobody, Kyron Williams, you know, uh, 11 weeks ago dropping, 20, you know, nearly 22 points in half of his games. I, it's just, you know, yet their price, those top three like dynasty running backs I just mentioned, their price tag is astronomically higher, of course, than Kyron's, right? So, Here's one of the best values out there. You know, just go buy your Kyron Williams if you're a contender. Yeah, I like it. Uh, Kyron, I think that's, you know, people forget fast. And, and I think people are already kind of one foot in, one foot out. So I think there's there's probably something. We're getting closer to the end of the season. Maybe somebody feels everybody's not hunting around for Kyron, but there may there may be, mm-hmm. you know, a, a little bit of a cheaper buy window here and really, really help you get it done. So, you know, I like that. Mm-hmm. Who, who, who you got next? Yeah, man, I got another buy. He's one of my favorite players. Loved him as a prospect. Still love him. But some people might be getting a little sick of him because he's been a little slow this season. But he's still on pace for a very good year. A wide receiver, a young wide receiver in the AFC, Jalen Waddle. He's another Mm. buy low for a contender and rebuilding, right? And I understand there's not a lot of people that want to part ways with him. But I'd be willing to bet you there are some people out there that are frustrated they're willing to cut ties. P- Again, recency bias, man. People people have just such a short attention span. Right now, Jalen Waddell is the wide receiver 29. He's one of the bigger disappointments this season so far, and he still has a ton of value just because of his name recognition and, you know, and his past production, right? I, I just I believe that there's a real chance that you can actually acquire him now. Uh, the buy window is finally open. I don't know if we've ever had a buy window open for Jalen Waddle in his career, man. Like he was a damn good, pro- he, he, he was a goddamn problem at Alabama. <laughs> yeah. He he dropped, you know, he dropped 848 yards and seven touchdowns as a true 18 year old freshman at, at Alabama. I mean, dude, like, come on. And then that ended up translating to him being the sixth overall pick back in 2021. Now in the NFL, his first season as a rookie, you know, Waddle commanded 140 targets. Let me let me say that again. Waddle commanded 140 targets in his first season. Okay. Yeah. 1,015 yards, six touchdowns. He was a wide receiver 13. He was basically a wide receiver one as a rookie. And then last season, what does Waddle do? 1,356 yards, eight touchdowns. He practically doubled his yards per carry, 18.1 yards per carries. It, like that's just an unbelievable n- number. Uh, he finishes a wide receiver seven in fantasy last year. And like that's a type of upside that we're talking with Waddle. And that was with Tyree Kill in front of him, right, dude? So like maybe his upside is even higher. Maybe we haven't even seen his. You know, we haven't seen his ceiling, maybe, right? I don't know. No, I don't like think so. I don't think so. I think right? we catch I, glimpses I kinda, of it. Yeah, I kind of don't think we've seen, we've seen peak ball from from Jalen Waddle. It's coming, man. Um, and you know, this kid ran a four four three. You know, he's he's as fast as it comes. You know, Waddle's like again, quote unquote, having a down year. But dude, he's on he's the receiver twenty nine. I get it. But but listen to his down year. Listen to his pace. Like just under eleven hundred yards at that. So it's a thousand and eighty nine receiving yards. 83 catches and just you know 5.6 touchdowns i mean dude like if that's a bad year shoot man you can play for my dynasty <laughs> yeah. or fantasy team any week you want dude i'm it, it's wild he's he's actually on pace for 226 fantasy points and that's equivalent to brandon Ayuk last year who was the wide receiver 15 you know dk yeah. metcalf mike evans t higgins they all had like within three four points of each other last year that is where you know, his uh, quote unquote down year is. So it's just wild that this is an all time low for Jalen Waddle. And, you know, this is the type of company, like, this is how great Waddle is, man. Go buy Waddle. I, I expect him to get hotter as the season goes on. And the final thing I want to say about Waddle, dude, Tua is one touchdown pass away from leading the NFL in touchdown passes. Okay. Tua is third in passing yards. Like, you better believe that some of this production is going to fall Waddle's direction. It is not always going to be all on Tyree Kill. And Tyree Kill's the goat. He's a Hall of Famer. He is play at his goddamn mind this season. I don't even have words for how good Tyree Kill is this year. He, Crazy. he may actually hit 2,000 yards. And, I, dude, I've been like kind of doubting him all season. I'm like, dude, he can't keep this up. He can't keep this up. He can't. Dude, like he just keeps keep he just keeps doing it. And um just think about what I said with Tua, man, and think just the situation, like regression, you know, in his favor feels inevitable. Go buy Waddle. Stop watching this YouTube video, dude. Stop listening to the podcast. Go buy him. <laughs> and then you can come back and finish the episode. So 
that's all I got to say about Jalen Waddle. Yeah, been a been a big buy on this podcast uh, for a while. So so you know you know I love that. I think you're you're perfectly on on point there. I don't think we've seen the seen, seen the ceiling and and you know I think he's <clears throat> obviously nobody's Tyree Kill, um, but you know he's somebody who fits perfectly in the offense that he's in and and can. It's not always going to be Tyree Kill, and and you know we got another year or two maybe. Who knows? But I think it's coming. I think he's very very playable. Otherwise, he hits those ceilings, uh, and I, and I love the future uh, for kind of where they're going. So yes, all, all in on. Yep. I agree. Buy, buying some uh, Jalen Waddle. Uh, you got you got it. What else you got? Yeah, man. I got one more. I got to sell right here. Okay. All right. The, so people aren't going to like this. Ooh. But some, somebody's got to say, say it, right? Tank Dell. No, it's not Tank Dell, <laughs> okay. dude. It's not Tank <laughs> <laughs> So I got one player I'm selling. It's Jalen Warren. All right. Okay. So All right. you guys could probably turn off the video. Nobody's going to want to hear this, but let's, look, let's hear it. Here's what I'm going to say. Okay. Kid looks, good. Kid looks good on tape, right? He's a spark plug. He's playing the best ball of his career. Nobody's going to argue that. I get it. Good for him, man. I am genuinely happy for Jalen Warren. I love anytime an undrafted free agent, anytime anybody succeeds, dude, good for them. But especially an undrafted free agent, great story, fighting with Najee for reps, good for him, dude. Pump. That's cool. That's nice. Let's talk about what really matters, okay? Here's the truth about Jalen Warren. He has, he's had 10 rushing attempts in 15, 10 rushing attempts or more in 15% of his games. The volume simply has never been good enough. Sure, it's getting better. Jalen Warren has played 26 career football games. He scored touchdowns in just four of them. One game in his career with over 19 fantasy points. Let me say that again. He's played 26 football games. He's hit over 19 fantasy points once. That's under 4% of his career. He has two games in his career over 14 and a half fantasy points. That is just over 7% of his career. He's been an RB1 in fantasy, a top 12 running back, just two times in 26 games. Okay. Like, yes, it's the last two weeks. Yes, recency bias is a hell of a drug. Yes, everybody hates Najee. I get it. I understand it. All right. It's whatever. Like, cool. All, all I'm saying is that, you know, he's the most expensive he's ever been. And if you want to sell, I support it. I would. Let me, let me, let me be clear. I would sell him. Yeah. Um, it's hilarious. It's just hilarious that the previous 24 games, you know, the previous 95% of his career just gets neglected. It's just forgotten because he's had back to back good games. And I'm not here to have like a Najee versus Jalen Warren debate. I'm not saying that Warren's never, I'm just saying that Warren's never been so expensive, right? That's the point I'm making. Go sell him to some sucker. This Pittsburgh offense sucks. Like just straight up, they are garbage, man. They are yeah. historically bad. Kenny Pickett looks atrocious. I am proud to say, like, that's like one of my few takes that I was right on, like, last year. I've, you know, obviously yeah. I've, I've hit on a lot more, but like, I, I, I was very skeptical of Pickett based off of what he did as a rookie. And sure. uh, I just, I think that Deontay Johnson and George Pickens, they're both rock stars and they're both ballers. And I just think that they both need to be freed, man. I think that they need to be on a new team. I, final thing I'm going to say, just go sell Jalen Warren. Thank me later, fellas. What you what you want to, you get a two for him? Is that enough? Yes, a hundred percent. If if somebody's offering me, dude, I'll take if it's an early two, not a question. Um if it's a mid two, I yeah, I dude, I seriously would rather a mid second than Jalen Warren. Wow. I, 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 I I yeah. I feel I feel good about it, man. I just I can't get on it. Like when when you think about the twenty six games in his career. And the, per, the actual percentage where he's been, you know, an RB1 or hitting 15 fantasy points or actually producing 10 plus rushing attempts, dude, it's so low. I'm telling you, man, if you take away those past two games of his career. Yeah, I mean, look, I I, you know, I just felt good. No, I just I, I didn't really understand the Twitter hype and like, sure, maybe they're kind of victory lapping right now. Like this is the peak. Well, they, they've, they've it's, waxed. I, and it's not going to last. They've waxed and waned the season of their victory lap in the beginning. It was, you know, this many games in a row score more than, uh, you know, Najee Harris. And then Najee had, you know, a, a nice little upswing mm-hmm. where, yeah, was Najee scoring the points you would like him to score? Not necessarily, but it was it was pretty solid. Uh, now, you know, Jalen Warren has had, you know, two two really solid games and Jalen Warren, very good player. I think, you know, I, when we talked about this at the end of a podcast this last week or two weeks ago, like mm-hmm. 
I just I feel like there's guys that are that are better as duos, you know. I and I think Najee is your is your hammer, and Jalen Warren comes in there and gives you something completely different. Like, there's no way to tell in, in, until it happens. But you know, I'm not the biggest believer in guys like Jalen Warren, and I wasn't a huge believer in Tony Pollard. You know, the guys who are the second guys who are so we always want that next guy who's so quote unquote efficient, and it's like, you know, I don't. It, it, and and previously to the last year with Pollard, like he wasn't super efficient when he would just get the spotlight when Zeke would miss a game here or there. So, you know, last year was really good. He was hyper efficient. And this year we don't really know. Maybe it's the injury, yada, yada, yada. But just be careful kind of what you wish for. Everybody wants Jalen Warren to be the guy. Like, have you watched Steelers games? Have you watched how many times Najee Harris is fucking hitting the backfield three yards deep before he even touches the ball? And, you know, it 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 is, you know, Jalen Warren has those plays sometimes, but I just... You know, it, it does seem like the the plays called and the play schemed are a little different when Jalen Warren's in there. If that was a whole game of that, you know, what what would that be? And and Jalen Warren is, is very good and has earned it. And for me personally, it's never been an indictment against Jalen Warren. It's been that the, that the Steelers had rolled with one guy. And I like Najee just on the volume this year. Um, and I thought the offense would be better. I thought there'd be more scoring opportunities. There'd be more goal line running from, from Najee. And I think Najee is a pretty good catcher. So, you know, Jalen Warren's role is warranted. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know that it, he'd go to this crazy next level if he was the guy and getting basically all of the touches. And I'm not sure it'll, it, it'll get there, you know, at, at any point. So, you know. I think he's a useful piece that you could that you could play if you need him, um, and and feel pretty good about it. Uh, and I, but I'd be fine with with cashing out as well. I'd, I'd you know I'd love to add him to something, and and get go bigger yeah. like add Jalen Warren <clears throat> to, you know, maybe one of your aging guys to a contender that you know, and and upgrade and get a little more than a second and have to throw in something else. So. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I generally like where you're headed again. I happy for the kid. I, I don't mean to come off like as aggressive or like I dislike him because like I, I have nothing against the kid. I'm, I'm happy for him. Love that he's producing lately, like 88 rushing yards, 101 rushing yards, 129 rushing yards over the past three games. Dude, oh, good for electric, him. Keep, keep going. Keep yeah. on. Yeah. Go like keep playing yourself into a nice second contract. I know, you know, running backs get no love. So, you know. Kids 25, like just keep playing good ball. And I, I hope that he continues to succeed. I just think that, you know, his value is, again, all time high. It's like you were succeeding at the casino, man. You're up a few hundred bucks playing a roulette. Go cash out. Right. T take your profits. You know? <laughs> right. Um, just walk away. Yeah. It, can, it could get worse quick. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You could be going back to that ATM real quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Before we get out of here, I, I'll throw a couple things out there. You know, I said don't sell Tank Dell. I I mean it. You know, if sure, if I could turn Tank Dell into Garrett Wilson, uh, sure, I'll sell Tank Dell. That's fine. Uh, but I just feel like there's a lot going around of these of of selling players that ascend into into greatness and into a role and look really really good doing so. As as we just you know, not shit on Jalen Warren, but basically said it wasn't going to happen. So I'm okay with moving off of him. Tank, no, this is a different situation. Um, you know, I just feel like we're, we're, we're in this weird space where people are selling elite players and rebuilds and all this other stuff. Like, look, if, if you're rebuilding, you, if your only option to get more assets is selling off, you know, your elite young players, I guess that's what you got to do because you got to do something. Uh, but for the most part, like if you hit gold, just, just, you, you got it, man. You got Tank Dell for a third. Like that's awesome. Go into this next year and and get get some more picks and, and gather some more guys. But just don't go selling these elite guys that that you know all all off season. I heard a lot of sell Garrett Wilson last year. Like if dude if if Aaron Rodgers was playing with Garrett Wilson right now, he'd be probably the number one fantasy receiver. Uh, you know he's awesome. Like there's no reason to be selling that guy. I get it. The the value has peaked out or whatever. But like. There are certain guys that, yeah, because you don't believe in the talent, you sell because the value peaked and he got on a hot streak. You know, I, that's not the case with Tank Dell. Tank Dell's an elite separator. Now, maybe you're a sizist and you want to get rid of him because you're scared he's going to get hurt. Um, but he's tied to a, a really good quarterback that you didn't expect. This offense is really good. Everything's moving faster than you expected with with tennis, Texas, the Texans. 
don't sell Tank Dell and don't go selling these all these elite assets just because you think they're at top of the peak value. G great, man. You pick somebody up at lower value and now they're a fucking top one, two, three round startup pick. That's fucking awesome. Like, unless you think it's a complete Fugazi, don't just be selling to sell. I think that I think that's silly in a lot of regards. And I see it a lot. Dude, it's it's wild. Tank Dell on pace for 1,244 yards, 11 touchdowns. Those words, dude, how like how you could you <laughs> I just never thought that that would come out of my mouth. Like he is playing out of his mind. And I, dude, I've seen enough out of Tank Dell where, again, king size is over here, dude. I don't even care. I'm, I'm in. I'm, yeah. I am a believer. If you have Tank Dell, you, you hold, you hold and Nailed. you go win with him because the kid's, what, wide receiver 16, again, paired with CJ Stroud. You know what? You know what's wild, man? It's so funny how the dynasty community, you know, myself included, we spend all off season, we study all these wide receivers, all these prospects, and we just get so much wrong, man. Like you look at mm -hmm. you look at some of the guys that were drafted late, like Puka, Tank Dell, Josh Downs, dude, they're all going. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, they're all so much better right now than you know players like. Quentin Johnston, a mm -hmm. first round pick, or um, I mean Michael even, Mayer at this point, he, you know. I, dude, I love Michael Mayer, and, I do and too, even but like I mean, at know, this point, you know. Yeah, and and all those three wide receivers that I just mentioned that were drafted late, like there's an argument to be made that you can take them over JSN or even like Zay. I, I don't know. Addison's definitely, you know, balling out. I think he's like wide receiver 13, but like, dude, it's a conversation. Like there were a lot of late mm -hmm. dart throws that, that have just smashed already, man. Yeah. And I feel like it's not a fluke. I feel like they're here to stay. Yeah, I agree. It, it, it's uh, this was an interesting class, man. 2023 was, was, you know, I feel like consensus has done a better job in years past where if you had a first or second, the hit rate was probably better in years past. I feel like 2023 was very wacky, man. Like those late, Start throws. I'm telling you, I feel like the hit rate was significantly higher. You know, Jaden Reed looks pretty nice. Oh, man. Now, I man. know he hasn't been quite quite as good as Tank Dell, but I'm just saying, man, there were some yeah, nice start nice throws in this 2023 game. class. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. So. I, so, you know, just to, to wrap this one up, some things that, you know, sometimes don't need to be said, but, you know, there's a lot of new dynasty players out there, a lot of people listening. This is the time of year uh where you know you want to try to offload the older wide receivers the older running backs you know the derrick henry's the james connors if you're if you're he heading towards a medium rebuild or something or you don't think you're going to be a contender next year you can go back and buy those guys again um if, if you want the following year because you're doing well but right now you can cash on on the value um, so, you know, guys like Mike Evans, guys like uh, DeAndre Hopkins, guys like Cortland Sutton, even um, who are who's having a nice run the time to you can you can maybe try to get out, sell to a contender here. Um, and I'm not saying you're going to get any of these guys for those guys, but you might be able to add to it and, and add other pieces to it. But, you know, guys who you have confidence in who maybe aren't peaking and playing well right now, like a Zay Flowers, uh, like a not they're not not that they're not playing well, but they're not. The fantasy output isn't matching what you think, you know, the ceiling is or what you've even seen on the feeling Zay flat or the field. Zay Flowers is one of those guys for me. Rashi Rice is one of those guys for me. Uh, you mentioned Jaden Reed the last two last week or two for him has been really good. But like there's probably still some windows in there to buy those guys. I'd still buy Jahan Dotson. Um, I think he's awesome. Uh, so, you know, buying on the lower end, uh, you uh, guys who aren't quite performing, who are younger and selling out on, on, on the older guys. I know it seems very elementary, uh, but I think it's a good way to kind of wrap up this video for the guys who are, you know, a little bit newer to this. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you're not selling for peak value at this point because, you know, the, the time to buy the older guys is in the off season when everybody has rookie fever and you're a contender. But right now, if you're a rebuilder, you, you, you know, the values for a contender right now, he might, he might, you know, move up a little bit on his value for him to get Mike Evans right now, you know, um, and you might, you might just have to say, Hey, I'll take, I'll take the two for Mike Evans right now. Cause I'm not probably not going to get anything any better in the off season. It's going to go down. He's getting a year older. The rookies are coming in. So everybody's down on the, on the old guys, even though Keenan Allen and Mike Evans, uh, you know, are helping you win leagues right mm -hmm. now. Um, but, um, and if unfortunately Amari Cooper's window might've, you know, value might have went down a little bit but you you know with losing watson but um so just adam thielen nice. adam thielen 
Cortland Sutton's on a roll, which I love Cortland Sutton. I think he's great. I'm not out on him. And then I'm not saying I'm out on any of these older guys by any means, but if you're, if you're a lower end team, help out, try, try to solicit some of these older guys to the rebuild teams or to the contending teams and, uh, and, and cash out, um, you know, a buy that I like for, for a contender. I like, I like Pittman, um, as a, as a, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, just as a, you know, still a pretty young receiver, but for a contender, you know, maybe, maybe somebody's just not feeling like they got everything they could. Uh, maybe you could trade, you know, your late one for, for Pittman and really sure up a spot, uh, you know, as your second or third wide receiver or second flex or something. I think Pittman's, um, you know, awesome. So, all right. You got anything else before we get out of here? Yeah, man. Older wide receivers. You forgot Julio Jones. He just caught a ball. Oh, maybe he's back, baby. Maybe he's back. No, I, no, I'm uh no, I like everything you said though, man. I uh out with the old, in with the new man, right? Rookies, right. that's all that matters. That's all we're talking about. That's all we care about. Right. That's the only guys who ever produced just rookies. So right. <laughs> go sell the form for Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, right. Uh, but uh, actually maybe do that. But now I, uh, <laughs> sure. I, lo- I just, yeah, I love talking ball with you guys. And uh, I've just been trying to put out more draft content, especially on Twitter. And I just, man, I love, I love the draft. It's my favorite day of the year. It's my favorite weekend. Love, love, love the NFL draft. So I'm, yeah. I'm already excited, man. Like <laughs> I, we're in week 11. I'm like, I don't even care about the fantasy playoffs. I don't even care about it. Like, <laughs> You know, the like draft, the rest baby. of the season, like, like, dude, I just, I just want to go draft the rookie. So, yeah, that's uh, that's what it's like being a dynasty player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, uh, man. Let's, one more let's other quick the... buy. We'll go running back. I like, I like buying Ramondre Stevenson right now. Everyone's down on them mm-hmm. on the uh, Patriots. I think he's a good player. Uh, they've been getting him involved in the past game a little bit, and and he looks he looks pretty good. Uh, so Ramondre, kind of wherever you are, I think is isn't the worst buy. Um, so, uh, like that. Like everything you just said, uh, make sure you go fi- follow uh, Austin at Austin Abbott FF on all of your social media platforms, correct? Yes, sir. Two B's, two T's, two F's. All right. Well, we'll uh, we just did a um, we did a twenty four startup with rookies, so that'll be out soon, and and we'll uh, we'll come on and chop it up about that. Really interesting, which we kind of talked a little bit about on on a previous video, but we'll we'll come in and, and get our first look at kind of where those guys are falling. Uh, in startups so uh, we'll catch you guys soon appreciate you peace